We have 85 short-term rental units and all but one are an average of a thousand miles away. And even my one unit here, I treat like it's a thousand miles away. And I've only been in it like a handful of times the last four months. And that's because of my 1,000 mile rule. I treat all my real estate and short-term rentals like they're a thousand miles away. And I build my team of people and put systems in place so that I can monitor and manage their performance from anywhere. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I'm in Utah and most of my units are in Florida and California. And we did over $2.7 million in revenue last year. And most of that was, was with me not being in the same markets as my properties. We have 30 employees from our housekeepers to our e concierge who do our guest messaging, to our virtual staff who do a lot of the back-end operations, and our property level staff, and all the way down to our director of operations who keeps everything together, runs the day-to-day -day of the business. And we run on EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System from the book Traction. And I got it right here. It's one of my favorite business books, and it's been a huge key for me because I read it the first time when I was building out the operations and the systems of the business. And that's what the book is all about. It's pretty awesome. You guys should definitely read it. And I know a good amount of entrepreneurs who also run their businesses on EOS from flipping to wholesaling to e-commerce and like everything in between. And it's the go-to for building out a small business. And I think the guidance is like, two to 250 employees kind of fit in the system. And real quick, I'm about to spit some fire on how you guys can manage your real estate and short-term rental business relatively hands-off, even if you only have one or a couple units, or by starting with the end in mind if you're just getting into it. So please smash that like button to tell YouTube this is a quality video so more people can get their hands on this good information because this is the stuff that made a huge difference for me when I was starting out, and I really appreciate it. So the principles and traction lay out the foundation for everything you need to run a well-oiled, smooth operation, and I built my business Business from the beginning this way. I've been on active duty in the Air Force for the entirety of my real estate career. So when I built out the business, I had to think with the end in mind and be able to balance my time and create a business where I didn't, you know, where it didn't take 50 to 60 hours a week of my involvement. And starting with the organization, the vision of the business, you have to solidify what the actual focus of your business is. Like what does your business actually do? and the key actions and plans that lead to that happening. I wanna share with you a tool that I used starting out with this. So this is the Vision Traction Organizer out of the EOS tool set from the book Traction. And this lays out kind of the beginning foundation of everything you need to be thinking about and kind of build with the end in mind in your business. So it starts here with the core values and, and those really act as like the decision-making guidelines for what you do and how you operate within your business so a really core component to think about and uh, verbalize from the beginning by putting it on this document and then the core focus that is going to align your activities for what you're actually chasing and what the focus of the business is and then you've got the 10-year target here and that really sets the long-term navigational course of where you're heading long term it's like you know, setting your point in the future where you want to get to. And then the other pieces kind of help you get there. Your marketing strategies, your plan, like I was saying, to get to that destination. And then from there, you break your long-term picture for what you want your business to be into bite-sized chunks. You got your three-year picture. And then as you get to the next page, you got your one-year plan to make it really um, accessible to reach towards those goals. And then the rocks is a portion that the rocks are like, basically they're your goals. They're your big um, there's your big things in your business that when you achieve those, it really pushes things forward. And you got your issues list. It could be, you know, we need to hire somebody uh, this quarter. We need to get a new property, like whatever that is, the issues that you need to work through over that time frame. So this is a really important tool. And I did this, I used this tool to start with the end in mind of what I wanted to create my business. And it still surprises me how many entrepreneurs don't have a clear vision and directive of their business. And if you start with that end in mind, you're gonna have a huge leg up. From there, you need to think about the key roles in the business and assign accountability to each of them. In the beginning, it's going to be you wearing a lot of hats, filling a lot of those different roles, but by breaking your business out into roles and responsibilities, it allows you to focus on what actually needs to be done, and then you can outsource key functions by having that function already built out. Like It's really hard to hire and to scale without knowing what these key roles are, and it's really hard on you when you're doing all of them. But you don't have a clear delineation of the roles because you'll bounce around from thing to thing and you do a lot without actually getting much done. And when you know the direction you're going with the business and the key roles and responsibilities that are working towards those main goals of the business, it becomes really important to start tracking your key performance indicators or KPIs so that you can track your performance. And in every business, there are metrics that 
deserve your attention as the business owner. If you don't know those numbers, you really don't know your business. For example, if you're a real estate agent but aren't tracking your leads or referrals, how can you accurately track your performance and growth? Like you might have one relationship or one event that leads to getting business but without tracking that and knowing what you know led to that closing of the deal, none of your actions are repeatable and you stay on the same hamster wheel just trying to get progress. And by tracking your KPIs, it allows you to focus on what pushes the needle and I've got another tool I want to share with you guys. All right, so this is the company scorecard or that KPI uh, scorecard from the EOS tools that was book traction as well. And I've gone ahead and just some kind of placeholders here so you can kind of visualize what this looks like. And at the beginning, uh, when I talk about like the, uh, the accountability in your role so you know who's doing what, you do the same thing on here and assign uh, the, uh, the key metrics towards a person. So I just put myself, for example, um, and like the first one, the measurable, like the KPI is cold calls and you've got your goal of what you're trying to hit, say it's 25. And then each week you're going to break out how and track how many cold calls you actually did. And the same thing for mailers. If you're trying to hit hundred, all right, well, how much, how many did I actually hit? Well, this week I hit 85. I was under my goal. This week I hit hundred. I hit my goal and then I hit 120 and I was over my goal. So, and then for referrals, the same thing. And all these things lead down into the deals, the big thing that is actually, you know, is like the progress that you want to see. And by not tracking and not doing these things, you don't know what's leading into the deals you're actually getting. And again, you track all these things each week and meet with accountability on the items. So by tracking your actions and results, it allows you to know what levers that you can pull to get more out of your business. And here's the key. You want to track your lead measures not just your lag measures. So lead measures are the actions that lead toward your goal and are a leading indicator of reaching your goal. As a contrast, lag measures are backward looking, like did I get a deal this week and are the result of the actions that you put in. So your KPI should focus on lead measures, the actions that when taken will lead you to achieving what it is you're aiming for and you track both. Think of it as your inputs and your outputs or your actions and your results. And for our business, our KPIs are things like occupancy and average daily rate, overall property rating and so on. And each week I meet with our team to go over those metrics and make sure we're performing well and coaching the team on things that they can improve on and improve on those KPIs, which you know obviously lead us to increasing our revenue and growing the business. And just as an example, I wanted to show you guys our scorecard. So this is very comprehensive for our business. We have a lot of metrics that we'd like to track. A big one for us is our overall property rating to see what we get ranked each week by our guests that aggregates for all our listings. And then things that go into our decision-making each week is, you know, what can we do to get that rating up? Uh, we have a, also look at our average daily rate and our occupancy and our uh, percent of bookings made within like a certain window so that we can then go in and make uh, changes to our revenue based on the data that we're seeing here on the scorecard. So it gives us decision-making ability uh, to drive the business forward. And this brings us to the battle rhythm or the meeting cadence of the business. So each week we have a company top level meeting uh, out of EOS, it's called a level 10 or L10. And we go over our scorecard, our to-do list, and the big issues that we have going on that we need to talk about. And we also go over our customer employee headlines, which for us is our reviews from the short-term rental platforms that we see, uh, so we can see what our guests are saying uh, and different areas that we can improve on. And then we go over our goals and review how we're progressing towards those. So this happens at the owner level and then at the operations level. So I meet with my partner, our director of operations, and our operations manager to go over the high-level stuff, and then they meet with the operations teams with that same cadence, so it's uniform across the company. Then each day, they have a short tag-up meeting where they go over the goals for the day, any issues that need to be discussed, just make sure we're getting the right things done and prioritizing the work. This uh, in-depth weekly meeting and then the short daily meetings give us a chance to align our work and make sure we're actually progressing on the things that we need to be. And I'm gonna show you guys this tool as well. And this video is becoming like the tool of tools meeting, but this is a really good one. This is like exactly what we use in our business. So it's the, Evo, uh, the level 10 meeting template you know, put your date and time, we track these by week. So we can go back and look over the last two years and see these, you know, in a chronological order and kind of go back and review. But getting into it, we have kind of the segue where we just talk with our team, right? It's a little light and just kind of connect and have, uh, have a minute with the team before we kind of get into the meeting. And then we've got our scorecard, which I just showed you to do a pretty in-depth dive there at our uh, kind of global level, if you want to call it that. And then at each one of our property levels to see how they're individually performing and how that contributes to the overall performance of the company. 
Then we have our rocks, which I mentioned are the big high level goals that when you accomplish those, that like tangibly pushes the business forward and gets you towards what you are trying to achieve. So the rocks are essentially the goals. You have customer employee headlines, which depending on your kind of business, you know, can be a different thing for you. Obviously, like retail is going to be different from short term rentals It's going to be different from long term rentals. But it gives you a chance to call out your employees, you know, share good things and see what your customers are saying about you. So you can get insight into how the product or service actually lands with your customer base and then make improvements off of that. Then to do list is pretty simple, you know, just things that we need to do that week. We'll go through that quickly and we use Asana for this and pump that out. And then IDS, I wanted to touch on this. So IDS is identify, discuss, solve. There's a whole section in the book traction about this, but essentially it's those higher level things that you guys need to talk about that take some brain power, that take some collaboration with your team. And these items might sit on here for, you know, a week or two or three as they get worked through, right? They have they might have multiple to-do list items that kind of roll up to to achieve that bigger issue so this is something right and you see the uh the meeting or the the time frame for these different sections and this one's 60 minutes so it's the where most of the time in the meeting is spent um and it's it's like that for a purpose so you guys can actually push forward um and make those decisions based on your you know employee your customer reviews your rock reviews your scorecard and all the different things you talk about before that and then finally, you conclude, recap your to-dos, make sure nothing's missed and kind of level set for the coming week. And then any cascading messages down from uh, leadership or management. And then finally, a rating like, hey, did we actually stick on this timeline? Did this take, you know, 60 minutes or did it take 120 minutes? Like, <laughs> where are we spending our time here? Um, so then you kind of give a rating and see how you are progressing over time with actually running the level 10 so that it stays a level 10. And before we hired our director of operations, this was my function to lead these meetings and meet with the team, go over the scorecard for accountability and just make sure that everything was running smooth. And as you grow, like it adds layers, but you can also incorporate this battle rhythm, even if, even if you have a small team or kind of just yourself, like stick to those big things. And I'd recommend it because it puts everyone that you have in your organization on the same page. Page. And once these things are in place, your vision, your goals, your roles and responsibilities, scorecard and KPIs, and your battle rhythm, you'll be in a place where things are running okay, but inevitably there are going to be things that just keep popping up that you have to reach out and respond to and react to, and they're going to take away from you executing the vision of what you're actually working for. And this is why you want to build in systems and processes into your business so that you have a common way of doing business when these things arise. We have systematized all the big functions in our business from hiring and onboarding to our guest resolutions and refunds, like from the top level company-wide stuff all the way down to our guest messaging. We have it all documented and accessible. And we've trained our team on how to utilize those systems and it's all kind of lives in the Google Drive for us. And the systems in your business act as the bumpers on like a bowling lane, if you can visualize that. Like they keep the ball of your operations on the path towards hitting the pins uh, so that your business doesn't go in the gutter. And then they act as like the, the left and the right bounds and just keep things moving forward. Now I've got another tool that I wanna share with you guys for documenting processes. All right, this is the last tool I'm gonna to share with you guys today, but there's a couple more that are really important, but I'm gonna put all these uh, in the description below so you guys can access them. But this here is the three-step process documenter, and this is kind of that essential steps that we took to actually, from the very beginning, documenting all of our process, right? It might be how we respond to a review, and then that might be broken down to different situations. Uh, if we have a refund or a cancellation request in our short-term rental business, like how do we handle that? And that's from like the, the low tactical level, things like that, all the way down to how we pay our transit, transient occupancy taxes with our uh, state and city governments. Like it's all a systematized and documented process so that we can have people step in and do these things. So first you wanna identify, like what is your handful of core things that you need to do in, in your business and make a list of those. Just write them down and put all those things down on paper and give each one of them a name so that you can then go back in and fill more. And then you want to document, this is step two. And just one at a time, go through those functions and record the major steps that, um, that go into you getting through that process and once you go through that process, I mean, that's where most of your time is gonna be spent. And then finally, um, on step three here, you wanna package that all together. So you have this accumulation of different uh, processes that all come together, right, that are layered. And now uh, you have this kind of like a, a package thing that you could hand off to somebody that know, if somebody didn't know anything about your business, they could read through this and like run your business for a week. Uh, while you went on vacation or whatever. And then when you have people that are actually filling these roles, 
that's what can happen. You can go on vacation while they're running your processes. So by documenting, this not only lets you provide clarity to what it is you do, but it also makes it a thousand times easier as you hire people to take over the roles of the business. From there, it's on you as the owner to delegate and then elevate. Another book to incorporate into this discussion is Who Not How, and that book kind of describes thinking of who can do this instead of the th like thinking, how can I do this? It's like shifting your mindset to think of how you can leverage the talents and time of others and help them and you grow, then that's gonna revolutionize the way that you approach your business. This is often the first thing I ask myself when a new task pops up. Like I try not to get back in the weeds of the doing, but finding a person and training them to do it or finding someone who already knows how to do it. Or I'm currently at this stage with our marketing efforts, so I'll let you know how that goes, but it's how I've out outsource myself out of every function so far um, from running the day-to-day -to, -day to updating the listings all the way to updating the pricing like all these are roles of someone else now and we have a documented process and accountability meetings where I review the KPIs and provide my feedback and recommendations for the people now doing these functions and as you put these things in place and continue to grow you'll eventually hit a new ceiling but it's all right, it's a glass ceiling, it's part of growing. Uh, just, just simplify things, right? Like with the tools in this video, you have those now, like remember that less is more and when everything is important, nothing is. So your goal is to create an environment where you can do your best work and empower the people on your team to do their best work within their role. So organizing your business creates clarity and the discipline that you put in up front will create freedom once it's done so that you can grow or that you can scale or just simply manage what you have with less headache. Like the goal of every entrepreneur should be to work less and make more money. But the truth is it's just an unattainable goal if you don't put these things in place. And when you do put them in place, it's not only achievable, but it's inevitable. I hope you guys like this breakdown of how I've been able to create this multi-million dollar Airbnb and short-term rental business while still working full-time. And I hope it inspires you to do the same. Like, let me know uh, below in the comments if I left anything out that you'd like to know more about. And I also put the link to all the uh, tools from EOS in the description below. And before you go, if you haven't yet, please hit the like button and subscribe for more of my best real estate and short-term rental tips to help you work less and make more money. So I'll see you next time.